All right. So we went over solubility yesterday. We also went over the polar nature of water. Okay. And of course, I kind of told you how I might test that on the unit exam. All right. Uh, so make sure you understand what a polar molecule is. Um, what effects that can have, the hydrogen bonding stuff, the cohesion adhesion, okay, and an example of a living organism that uses it to survive, like plants transporting water, okay. Um, and we also talked about terminology related to solubility and how to use the solubility charts, okay. Your quiz tomorrow will probably have some solubility chart stuff on it, okay. Um, so just kind of be ready for that for today and probably for the next week and a bit, we will be working on chemical reactions, okay? This is going to be new, right? You will not have likely covered this in much detail, if at all, okay, in any of your other science courses, okay, other than maybe knowing what the signs of the chemical change are, which are kind of the, which is kind of the first thing we're gonna go over today, okay? So I would say, not to, you know, put it lightly, this is the most important lesson in the year. Okay, uh, everything we do from here on uh, in this unit is going to revolve around this. Okay, knowing how to write and balance and predict chemical reactions. Right. For today, we're just going to start with the five types and kind of the structure of writing a chemical equation. Okay. All right. Quick review. If a chemical reaction or a chemical change occurs, what are some signs that that has happened? Color change. Color change. Uh, precipitate. A precipitate could form. If uh, heat, if, if, like heat is, yeah, just heat. Okay, yeah, there could be a temperature change, either positive or negative. No? Uh, smell change. Could be an odor change. Okay, those are all good signs of a chemical reaction. Why are those the signs of a chemical reaction? Irreversible. Okay, they're irreversible, or at least not without an input of a lot of energy. The physical properties changed. Right. The physical properties are changing, and the reason they're changing is because in a chemical reaction, our final products are chemically <coughs> different than our starting reactants. Okay, so if I have a chemical reaction... Okay, like this, we'll say. Um, okay, so that's a type of chemical reaction that we'll go over today. It's called the double replacement reaction. Okay. In this reaction, these are our reactants. Okay. Might not be a bad idea to add this in somewhere or write it down, because okay, there's not really a diagram okay, kind of to do with this in the notes. Okay. And these are our products. So what you start with, on the left side of a chemical equation, are the reactants. They're what's going to react. And then the right side of the reactionary equation is the products, which is what's produced. Okay. Now, just a minute ago I said the products are chemically different than the reactants. If you're looking at that equation, does it look like it's different chemicals? It depends on how you look at it, okay? Are there different compounds? Yes. Yep. yes. Are there different elements? No. 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 Is that important? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that's what Dalton said happens in a chemical reaction. Atoms can be separated. They can be joined. They can be rearranged. But they can't be changed into atoms of other elements. This is a prime example, okay? In this reaction, the elements, atoms, are rearranged. Okay? They end up with different partners on the product side. But I still have all the same elements that I started with. Okay? They would kind of follow me there. Right? So that kind of ties.
ties into that. There's another thing that this is going to tie into, and it's the law of conservation of mass, or the law of conservation of matter. And it's the same thing, just some people word it differently. Okay? That law states that you cannot create matter, and you cannot destroy it. When that is applied to a chemical reaction, that means I have to have the same amount of each kind of atom on both sides of a chemical reaction. Okay? So in this chemical reaction, okay, I have to put in these two big numbers, these two twos. They're called coefficients. In order to make sure that I have the same amount of everything on both sides. Okay? On this side, on the reactant side, how many magnesium atoms do I have? One. Okay. How many do I have over here? One. One. All right, so I didn't create any magnesium and I didn't destroy any. It's balanced. How many chlorine atoms are here? Two. Okay. How many are over here? One. Two. Two. Okay. This big two means there are two sodium chloride molecules. Each sodium chloride molecule has one chlorine in it. Okay, so there are still two chlorine atoms on both sides. Everybody okay with that? Does the same apply to the sodium then? Yeah, okay, over here there are two sodium atoms, and over here there are two sodium atoms. Okay, on this side, on the reactant side, how many hydroxides are there? Two. Okay, how many over here? Two. Okay, so is this equation balanced? Yes, yes I've obeyed, okay, Dalton's rules, and I've obeyed the law of conservation of mass, which of course trumps Dalton's rules, okay? Because something will happen bad with the universe if you create or destroy matter, okay? You have, you'll become godlike in that time and space, okay? We cannot create matter, we cannot destroy it. All right, everybody okay with how that works? That's the structure and the purpose of writing a chemical reaction, is to make sure that we're kind of obeying all those things. All right, so in a chemical reaction, the final products are chemically different than the starting reactants, okay? That's something we gotta know. That's kind of the definition of a chemical reaction or a chemical change, okay? And it is why, as we said, we see these signs when a chemical reaction occurs. We're making new stuff, okay, on the product side. That new stuff has different physical properties, okay, and thus, looks, smells, okay, is different, okay, could be a different state, could be different, okay, temperature, could be different color, okay, all of those kinds of things. All right, that part is probably review, I would assume, yes, you guys talked about chemical changes in like grade eight and nine science. All right, so now we're going to look at five basic types of chemical reactions. Okay, there are more than that, but we're going to look at the five basic types of chemical reactions. Okay, the first and probably simplest of the chemical reaction types is a synthesis reaction. Sometimes people call it a formation reaction. Okay, um, in a synthesis or formation reaction, two elements are going to combine to form a single compound. It could also technically be two compounds joining together to form a single larger compound, but that's rare, okay? Most of the time, we are gonna have two elements, okay, uh, combining to form an ionic or molecular compound. Okay, so in this first reaction here, okay, I have two magnesium atoms reacting with one molecule of oxygen. How do I know that this represents two atoms of magnesium and this represents one molecule of oxygen? This is O2 versus two magnesiums. Yeah, okay. The subscript <coughs> little two, okay, this little two here, Okay, that basically implies they're joined together. If I wanted two oxygen atoms, I would have written it like this, 2O. Okay, that would imply I have two separate oxygen atoms. 
but when I write it as O2, that means that they are bonded together. And remember that oxygen is one of our special molecular elements that we talked about the other day. Okay, remember our special molecular elements are hydrogen, <coughs> okay, nitrogen, oxygen, and all of the non-metals in group 17, as well as phosphorus and sulfur. Okay, those are our special molecular elements okay, that bond to themselves. All right, so I've got two atoms of magnesium, one molecule of oxygen, they're going to react with each other to form two molecules of magnesium oxide. Okay, so a simple synthesis reaction. Now, you might be looking at the S and the G's there that are in brackets. Those are the states of matter. Okay, so magnesium is a solid it's metal. Okay. Oxygen is obviously a gas. Magnesium oxide is a powdery black solid. Okay, you are never going to have to put in the states of matter in science 10. Okay, it is like one of the first things you will have to do in Chem 20, but you don't have to do it in science. Okay, not that it's hard, you just have to look up stuff. But, okay, um, this is not something we bother with in science 10. Okay, everybody with me on how that reaction worked? Okay, did I balance it correctly? Yes, there are two magnesiums in the reactants, there are two magnesiums in the products, there are two oxygens in the reactants, there are two oxygens in the products. Okay, because there's two magnesiums here, there's two magnesiums here, there's two oxygens here, this two says there are two magnesium oxide molecules, that means two atoms, two atoms. Okay, everybody all right with that? So the big numbers, the coefficients, in this case the twos, mean multiply everything behind me by me. Okay? All right, another example, okay, and this one with a diagram, would be if I had two potassium atoms reacting with a molecule of bromine, okay, to produce two molecules of potassium bromide. Okay, another simple synthesis reaction where two elements combine to form a single compound. Okay. So, as we go along, you're going to be required to identify the reaction type. Okay. It's going to be important when we start predicting the products later. Okay. All of the reactions are significantly different, and there's only five, so it's not like a huge deal to be able to remember the five types and figure out what type is going on. Okay. Even if all you're given is the reactants. Okay. If I was to show you a reaction that after the arrow there was nothing and it had two elements, you'd know it was a synthesis reaction because it's the only reaction that starts that way, okay? All right, questions on the synthesis reaction? Okay. Second type is the opposite of synthesis. Simple decomposition, okay? Decomposition means to break down or simplify, okay? So in a simple decomposition reaction, a single compound breaks down into its constituent elements, or sometimes smaller molecules, okay? but most of the time just its elements. Okay, so in our first reaction there we've got water. How many molecules of water? Two. Okay, and it's breaking down into two molecules of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas. Okay, is the reaction balanced? Yeah. Yes. Okay, on the reactant side, there are two times two is four hydrogen atoms, two times two is four hydrogen atoms, two times one is two oxygen atoms, two oxygen atoms. Okay, so it's still balanced. All right, and Decomposition reactions are the ones where you really have to know whether you're dealing with a special element. Okay? If you're breaking something down into elements, you need to know whether you need to write it as 2H2 or 4H. Okay? We know hydrogen is one of our special elements. When it's by itself, it's always a 2. Same with oxygen. Okay? That's why it's important to know those ones. All right, um, in our second decomposition reaction here, we've got two molecules of nitrogen triiodide 
okay? and it is breaking down into one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of iodine. Okay? Is it also balanced? Okay? So two times one is two, two. Okay? Two times three is six, three times two is six. Yep, we got the same number of everything on both sides. Okay. I am going to show you how you balance a reaction later on today. Okay. I'm just right now showing you how to check that one is balanced. Okay. All right, questions so far? Okay, so synthesis reaction, two elements go together to make a compound, okay? And decomposition reaction, one compound breaks down into two elements. Our special elements here, just as a quick review. Okay, on your periodic table, they are hydrogen, okay, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, okay, um, and phosphorus and sulfur. Now, just so you know the color code here, okay, anything that is in yellow, this should also be yellow. My mistake here, the hydrogen should also be yellow. Okay. That's weird. Writing the word yellow in red is weird. Okay, so yellow are our diatomic elements. They come in pairs, okay? If it is in purple, okay, so phosphorus, okay? Phosphorus comes as a four when it's by itself, okay? And sulfur, we're gonna say it's red because it's the closest color I've got, okay? Sulfur is an eight. special elements. Is this something we'd be able to write on our periodic table to take into it? Um, I used to say yes, and then the chem teachers told me no. So I'm going to have to say no, because the chem teachers say that's something you should know. Okay. Um, so the good news is, is that they're all together. Okay. And they make kind of a seven over there on the right hand side of the periodic table. Okay? So those ones there, and then you got phosphorus and sulfur. Yeah, hydrogen's over here by itself. Okay. That's the reason I'm showing you this picture. This is the periodic table I used to give out, and it had those highlighted. Okay, combustion reactions are a completely different animal, okay? They are different from all the other reaction types, okay? In that they have their own set of rules that they operate on, okay? For the other four reaction types that we're gonna go over, we use all the same rules for balancing and all that kind of stuff, but combustion reactions have their own set of rules, okay? Now, in a combustion reaction, or sometimes it's called a hydrocarbon combustion reaction, you have a, oddly enough, hydrocarbon, okay? That would be a molecular compound containing carbon and hydrogen, okay? Or a fuel reacting with oxygen, because obviously for fire to happen, there has to be oxygen there, okay? When those things react, okay, you get fire and you get carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct. Okay? In case you ever wondered, like on a really, really cold day, you know, you're, you're in traffic and you see the car in front of you and water is coming out of the exhaust pipe. Okay, have you ever seen like water dripping out of the exhaust pipe of the car in front of you? That's because that's a byproduct of the burning of fuel. Okay? <coughs> on a really cold day, it has enough time to condense in the exhaust system before it gets out. On most days, it 
just comes out as a gas, okay, as water vapor, right? But on really, really cold days, sometimes it can condense before it gets out, and you'll see water dripping out of the tailpipe of the car. Okay. All right. Um, here's the good news about combustion reactions. No matter what is burning, so no matter what that first compound is, the products are always the same. No matter what I burn, the products are carbon dioxide and water. The only thing that changes is how much carbon dioxide and water gets produced. Okay? So what I mean by that is these numbers here, the coefficients, they get bigger. Okay? The bigger the fuel molecule, the more carbon dioxide and water get produced. But it's always carbon dioxide and water. So you, just, you can just memorize that. You don't have to think about it each time you come across a combustion reaction. Okay. All right, so in this combustion reaction, in this one in particular, we have C3H8. Okay. Anyone know what this gas is called? Propane. Propane, yeah. Okay. This is propane. It's the stuff that you use in a barbecue. Okay. Um, so propane burning in the presence of oxygen is going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Is this reaction balanced? Okay, well let's double check it. How many carbons here? Three. How many over here? Three. Okay, how many hydrogen here? Eight. Four times two is eight, so we're good on the hydrogens. Okay, how many oxygens here? Ten. How many here? Six. And four is ten. That plus isn't there to say it's this and this. It actually means add. Okay, add the numbers together. If I've got oxygen in two places, I gotta figure it out in both, okay? And then add them together. All right, so the balancing rules go like this. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different reactions here, and I'm gonna show you what happens, then I'll show you the balancing rules. Okay, so write this one down. We're gonna have C5H12 plus oxygen okay what should I which element should I start with okay uh, our rule for every reaction type other than combustion is to start with the biggest number, okay? For every reaction except combustion, okay? We start with the biggest number. The reason for that is if you can balance the biggest thing first, everything else falls into place behind it, okay? In a combustion reaction, that won't work. In a combustion reaction, to make it work most conveniently, you balance it in alphabetical order. Okay, that's rule number one for balancing combustion reactions. Okay, so we'll just put a little thing down here. Okay, so and okay, combustion rules, rule number one. So first rule is balance in alphabetical order. So I should balance my carbons first. How many carbon on the reactant side? Five. Five. Okay. Now, can I do this? No. no. What is, why not? It's going to be a different molecule. Exactly. I'm supposed to have carbon dioxide, not pentacarbon dioxide. Okay? I can't change what's made. I can change how much is made. So I can put a 5 here. Okay? Now I have 5 carbons on both sides. What comes next alphabetically? H. H. Okay. How many H's over here? 12. 12. All right. What times 2 will give me 12? 6. Okay. Now my hydrogens are balanced. 
Now I have to balance oxygen because it's all that's left and it's last alphabetically. Should I start on the product side or the reactant side? Products, because it's in two places. Okay? I need to find the total amount of oxygen on that side. And I already have the numbers in place to get it. Okay? So how many oxygens here? Okay, plus? Okay, so how many? 16. Okay, what times two will give me 16? Done. Okay, you have to do a little bit of math. About that much. You gotta like multiply and divide okay, and add. Okay, it's not, not too difficult okay, on that one. Okay, so that one only required one rule. But I said there were two. Okay. Let's try this reaction. Okay, so this is this stuff is called pentane. It's not very common. This stuff is butane. It's the stuff that's in lighters. Okay, so if you've ever used a lighter to start your barbecue, you're using propane and butane together to make fire. Okay? Alright. Plus O2. Okay, so that's it. Doesn't matter what you're burning in a hydrocarbon combustion reaction, your products are always carbon dioxide and water. All that's going to change is how much carbon dioxide and water you make. Alright. This reaction is going to require the second rule, but I want to show you why it requires the second rule. So let's start by balancing alphabetically. How many carbon do I have here? Four. Four. Okay, what needs to go here? Two. A four. Okay. okay. And how many hydrogen do I have? Ten. Ten. Okay, so go over here. What times two is ten? Five. Okay, now if I look at my oxygens, Here's where I'm going to run into a problem. I've got how many here? Eight. Eight. And how many here? Eight plus five is? Okay. What times two gives me 13? Six and a half. Can I have six and a half oxygen molecules? Probably not. No. Okay. When you're balancing, you cannot end up with a decimal. Right? Dalton said you can't have fractions of an atom or even fractions of a molecule. Fractions of a molecule are elements. Okay? That's not the same thing. So I can't end up with decimals. So this balancing is not going to work because I would have to put six and a half in front of oxygen. Okay. So in comes the second rule. Okay. Now, you guys know I'm already that I'm a bit of a nerd and I love Star Wars. So the second rule is the rule of two. If you like Star Wars, you know what the rule of two is. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's two there are. Okay? So, in the rule of two, okay, this is how the rule of two goes. Okay? If an even number of carbons you have, multiply with the two you will. Okay? So, if you have an even number of carbons, that is a four, a six, an eight, a ten, whatever, you start your balancing with. carbon atoms start your reaction with a 2. Okay, because if you multiply 0.5 by 2, you get a whole number, right? Okay, so let's try that. So if I, this, oh, sorry. Does what? this only apply if you have an odd number? Like if you have to use this? If you have an even number of carbons, yeah. like a 4, say <coughs> 8 or a 10, you have to start with a 2, because the same thing will happen on all of them. All right. You'll end up with a 0.5 for oxygen. Okay. So I start with a 2. All right, what's 2 times 4? Eight. 8. All right, so I'm going to put an 8 here. What's 2 times 10? 20. 20. Okay, what times 2 will give me 20? 10. 10. Seeing a pattern? Okay, it's always the same numbers. 
okay? Um, and then over here, I've got eight times two is 16 oxygens, plus 10 more is 26. What times two is 26? 13. Now I got a whole number. And that's the lowest terms. I can't reduce any of those numbers down any further. 13 is prime number. Okay. Everybody all right with that? That's all there is to combustion. Okay. All the other reactions, we just start with the biggest number and we go from there for balancing. But combustion, well, marches to the beat of its own drum. And so it needs its own special balancing rules. Okay, questions on the combustion? No? Okay. I'm going to give you guys about a five minute break here. Just decompress a little bit before I go over the two react uh, replacement reaction things. Okay? Okay, so the last two reaction types. And the last two reaction types we're going over are actually very similar. They are both replacement reactions. And they always involve ionic compounds. Okay? They're either going to be ionic compounds only, or they're going to be elements and ionic compounds. There will never be a molecular compound in a replacement reaction. Okay? So what happens in a replacement reaction is that some part of the ionic compound is getting, oddly enough, replaced. Okay? So in a single replacement reaction, okay, we would have an element reacting with an ionic compound. Okay? So in this case, we're going to have copper reacting with silver nitrate, okay, which is an ionic compound. So what this would look like would be I would have a clear solution of silver nitrate, and I'd put a piece of copper in it let's say like a piece of copper wire or a penny or something like that, okay? And over time, what will happen is the silver and the copper will switch places, okay? So what ends up happening in this reaction, if you run it in real life, okay, is that silver would plate out onto the penny, okay, or the copper wire. Okay, and what I mean by plate out is it'll actually start to form silver on the outside of the piece of copper as the silver and copper replace each other. Is that how you like um, nickel plate electrodes replace like brass rings? Yes. Okay, so that, yeah, this is the whole process of electroplating. Okay, if you've never heard of what that is. Okay, um, now don't think that, okay, I gotta get my hands on some of that silver nitrate stuff because it sounds like a quick way to get rich. If I had silver nitrate and copper, I could get silver because silver is expensive. Well, copper's expensive now too, but not as expensive as silver, okay? Um, do you suppose silver nitrate is also expensive? Yes. Yes, in as much as it contains silver and obviously can be used to make silver. You're not going to make bars or, you know, like bullion of silver or anything like that, okay? It's not like that big of a reaction. You just get a small amount, okay? Um, so in this reaction, all that happens is the element replaces the part of the ionic compound that it is like. Okay, so if it's a metal reacting with an ionic compound, the metals will switch places. Okay, if it's a non-metal reacting with an ionic compound, the non-metals will switch places. I'll show you an example of each. Okay. All right, and the reason they have to replace the part that they're like is because we have to get an ionic compound, or two ionic compounds, on the product side as well. Only ionic compounds can be part of replacement reactions. So if I had a metal and it swapped out the non-metal, I'd have two metals bonded together. Does that even happen? No. There are no compounds where two metals bond chemically together. I can mix compound two metals together, that's an alloy but they're not chemically bonded to each other, okay? And if I get two non-metals bonded together, I don't have an ionic compound. I have a molecular, molecular compound, all right? So you have to end up with metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal, non always in this type of reaction, okay? All right, so kind of like this. 
Okay, chemistry is kind of old fashioned, so there's this dude who's by himself, okay, and there's this couple, okay, a man and a woman who are dancing, okay, dude who's by himself is like, I like her, I don't like him, he's kind of a jerk, so I'm going to take his girl, okay, and so he ends up, he ends up with the girl, and that guy ends up by himself, okay, but it had to end up with boy girl because chemistry is old fashioned. Okay, so it had to end up that way. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an ionic compound. And that's as far as we're taking that analogy. We're not making any statements about anything else. Okay, all right, let's look at one. So, on this one here, we had metal reacting with ionic compound. That gave us that the copper replaced the silver. So, we ended up with silver by itself and then copper nitrate. The same could be true in a reaction that looks like this. So this would also be a single replacement reaction. Magnesium oxide would be my ionic compound. So what part of magnesium oxide is the chlorine going to replace? Oxygen. The oxygen, right. So on this side, who ends up by themselves? Oxygen. oxygen. Now, how does oxygen end up when it's by itself? Uh, as a two. This is where you have to remember those things. Okay. And then I would have magnesium with chlorine. Now, when magnesium and chlorine go together and make an ionic compound, what do I have to do? Right, I gotta drop and swap. Remember why I said it's so important you're able to make chemical formulas? This is why. Okay, so this is a minus one, this is a plus two, MgCl2. If you don't do that, you won't be able to make the reaction balance at the end. You won't be able to make the same number of oxygens and chlorines on both sides. All right? Now, I've just built that reaction. Is it balanced? No. No. All right. Um, what should I start with? Two. Yeah. Biggest number. And that's in two places. I could start with chlorine or oxygen. Doesn't really matter. Okay? Uh, chlorine's first. So I'm going to start with that. Chlorine's already balanced. Okay, I got to balance my oxygens. Okay, because there was two chlorines here and two chlorines there. So, all right, I got two oxygens here. I only have one. Okay, so what what do I need to do? Put it here. Where do I put the two? Right. I have to put it here. Otherwise, I change the compound. Okay. I can say there's more of this, but I can't change what it is. When I do that, now my oxygens are balanced. But now, how many magnesium do I have? Two. All right. I got to go over here. What do I have to put here? Two. Okay. Ah, crap. Now that ruins my chlorine, too. How many chlorine do I have now? Four. Okay, so what do I have to do over here? Two. Right. You're gonna, when you're balancing, you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get everything balanced. Okay. All right. Now it works. All right. That's single replacement. Okay. Single replacement, whatever element is there, replaces the part of the ionic compound that it is like. So if you have a single non-metal, it replaces the non-metal. If you have a single metal, it replaces the metal in the ionic compound. Okay. Everybody alright with that? Okay, last reaction type. Double replacement reactions. Okay? In a double replacement reaction, you have two ionic compounds reacting with each other. Okay? So you have to end up with two different ionic compounds can't end up with any molecular. So basically, in a double replacement reaction, all you do is swap the metals. If I swap the metals, I'll end up with two different ionic compounds. Okay. Wait, you just swap the metals? Yep, in a double replacement reaction, you just swap the metals. Um, but that's sodium two chlorine. Side. Yeah, it's, it's balanced, balanced though. Uh, yeah, I guess it's balanced. Right? There's two two sodium here, two sodium there, okay. two chlorine there, two chlorine over here. Yeah. Because when I drop and swap, you're right, I get different numbers on the other side. That's why I put in the coefficients. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's look at one that doesn't have a polyatomic ion and it makes life a little bit easier. 
Okay, so all you do is swap the metals in a double replacement reaction. So let's say I had this double replacement reaction. Um, okay, so I'm going to have beryllium oxide with potassium bromide. double replacement reaction, I swap the metals. So on this side, on the product side, who does potassium end up with? Oxygen. Okay, who does beryllium end up with? With bromine. Okay, I already hear rumblings. That's good. What's wrong with those two? They're not balanced. They're not balanced. Okay, not that the reaction's not balanced, it's also not balanced, but those two compounds have not been dropped and swapped. If I just made two new ionic compounds, I better make them right. Okay, this is a minus two, this is a plus one, so that's K2O. Okay, this is a plus two, this is a minus one, so this is BeBr2. Now, I can balance the whole reaction, okay? I should only have to put in one number. What is it? Where? Right. Okay, I have to put a two there because on this side I've got two potassiums. So I put a two there to balance my potassiums. That gave me two bromines. I got two bromines over there. Everything else is a one. I'm good. Okay. So all we have to do. So they're easier. Single replacement and combustion are probably the toughest. Combustion just because it's got its own rules. And single replacement because you're going to make special elements sometimes that you're going to have to remember. Okay? You're going to have to figure out what to swap, okay? and you're going to have tricky balancing. Right? Um, double replacement, swap the metals and balance. Like it's just it's, it's a lot quicker. All right, questions so far? So when we write a chemical reaction, okay, what we want to show is how much, sorry, what first, what's reacting, and how much. The what, that's obvious. We put in the formulas for things and we know what is reacting. The how much, okay, that's the coefficients, those things we use to balance it. Okay? And we always make sure that a reaction is balanced because we have to obey the law of conservation of mass. Okay? That's all there is to really worry about, for science 10 anyway, for a chemical reaction, right? You don't have to worry about the states of matter. What do you suppose AQ stands for? Aqueous. Aqueous, yes, it means dissolved in water. Okay, so that's a solution, right? As opposed to a solid or a liquid or a gas. Okay, let's have you guys try a couple here. So what I would like you to do with these first two is I would like you to identify the type Write it out in words, basically just write the names of everything, okay? And balance it, okay? Give those first two a try. So what kind of reaction is the first one? Synthesis. It's a synthesis reaction, yeah. We have two elements combining to form a single compound. All right, so I would say we would write synthesis next to that, that's why. Okay? Um, now i got to write it in words. So as we were saying just a minute ago, when you have your molecular elements, their name is still just their element name because in the end, that's all that's in that molecule is nitrogen and hydrogen. Right, so this is simply going to be nitrogen plus hydrogen okay, gives nitrogen trihydride. what it looks like in words. What should I balance first? Yeah, I would say probably the hydrogen is a good place to start. It doesn't always work, but okay, um, it, it's always the best place to start. So I've got three hydrogens over here, and I've got two over here. So three in the, rea in the products and two in the reactants. How do I balance two and three? You got it. I find their lowest common multiple, six. 
Okay, and so I put a three here, because three times two will give me six, and I put a two here because two times three will give me six. And oh, look what happened. When I put that two there, it balanced my nitrogens for me. Okay, always a good sign when a number you put in makes something else that you weren't even trying to balance work. Okay, means you're on the right track. Okay. Is that one now balanced? Okay. Um, for this next one here, what kind of reaction am I looking at? Single replacement. Yep. Okay, we have a non-metal reacting with an ionic compound, producing a new ionic compound and a new non-metal. All right. If I'm writing this out in words, what's N2? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Okay. What's CaCl2? Calcium chloride. What's this stuff? Calcium nitride. Calcium nitride. Should I balance first? Yep. Let's go with the biggest number. Calcium is our biggest number. Okay. On this side, there are three calciums. On this side, there's only one. So what needs to go in front of this? Okay. When I do that, how many chlorine does it give me? Okay. How, what do I need to put in front of this? Okay. And there's two nitrogens and two nitrogens. So. Is that making some sense? Yep. All right. Try those three. All right, what kind of reaction are we looking at for the next one? It's a combustion reaction, yeah. Okay, we got carbon and hydrogen reacting with oxygen to make water and carbon dioxide. Anytime your products are water and carbon dioxide, you're looking at a combustion reaction. Okay, all right, what gas is this? That's methane, it's fart gas. Okay. All right, um, so that's a combustion reaction. Okay, um, so this would be, I mean, we can call it methane or we can just go carbon tetrahydride. Okay, since that's how we've been taught to name our compounds, you'll learn about naming a, uh, organic compounds in Chem 20. Okay, plus oxygen gives us water. Water you can use the common name for, by the way. Okay, don't bother writing dihydrogen monoxide or hydrogen hydroxide or whatever, just write water. Water's good, okay? Um, plus carbon dioxide. All right, um, so when I'm balancing, it's a combustion reaction. What order do I balance in? Uh, alphabetical. alphabetical order, do I need the rule of two for this one? I use the rule of two if I have an even number of carbons. Do I have an even number? No, I have one. One is the odd, oddest and loneliest number. Okay, so we have no need for a two. I have one carbon here and one carbon there. Four hydrogens here and two here. What needs to go here? Yep, put a two there. Okay, and now I can look to my oxygens. There's two oxygens here plus two more is four. What goes here? Balanced. Okay, balanced out alphabetically. Okay, oxygen last, and we got our numbers. Okay, did not need the rule of two. How many people are done the next one? Okay, what kind of reaction is it? Uh, decomposition. decomposition, yep. Okay, uh, for writing it out in words, this would be trisulfur. No. Sorry, trinitrogen. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the sulfur. Trinitrogen. Disulfide gives us nitrogen and sulfur, right? Because sulfur comes as an eight when it is by itself. All right, what should I balance first? Sulfur, biggest number. Always balance the biggest number first if you're not in a combustion reaction. Eight sulfurs over there, two over here. What needs to go in front of this? Four. Okay. Four times three is? 12. What times 2 will give me 12? 6. Balanced. Okay. Everybody all right with that? All right. Just like back and forth, back and forth until you got it all. 
Okay, should I check it at the end? Yep. I just got balanced, but like, yeah. I should probably just double check, okay? Uh, so 12, 12, 8, 8, yeah, okay, I'm good. All right. Um, all right, this one here, what kind of reaction are we looking at there? Single That's a single replacement reaction. Okay, um, so we are gonna have, so I'm just gonna write SR for single replacement. Chlorine plus sodium iodide. Plus, or sorry, gives iodine plus sodium chloride. Okay, what should I balance first? Chlorine. Yeah, chlorine or iodine. They're both the two. Doesn't matter which one I do first. Chlorine comes first in the reaction, so we can start there. Two on that side, what needs to go here? Two. Okay, how many sodium does that give me? Two. All right, so I gotta go back here and put in two sodium. Does that fix my iodines? Yes. Okay, am I done? Yep. Yep. Okay. How are we feeling about that? Good. Yeah? Not, not too, too difficult, right? All right, so let's see. I think I got one more on here. No, I got two more on there. All right, give those a try before they end the class. Okay, let's look at the second to last one here, guys. What kind of reaction is it? Double replacement. They're both ionic compounds. Okay, so we have um, calcium chloride. Okay, reacting with sodium carbonate. Okay, to produce calcium carbonate. What's in need of balancing? Sodium and the chlorine, right? And they are both twos on the reactant side, and they end up together as ones on this side, so what needs to go in front of this? Right. Is everything else okay? Yeah, there's one carbonate here, there's one carbonate there, one calcium, one calcium, everything else is good. I only need that one number to fix the reaction or balance the reaction. How many people have done the last one? Okay, what kind of reaction? Double replacement. Okay. This is also sometimes called a neutralization or an acid base reaction because what you are doing is taking an acid, because it's got hydrogen acting as the metal, and reacting it with a base, okay, something that has OH in it, right? And you always get water and a salt of some kind as your products in an acid base reaction. Okay. Uh, so we've got hydrogen hydrogen chloride plus potassium hydroxide gives water and potassium chloride. And what do I need to do for balancing? Nothing. Nothing. If you don't see any little numbers, everything's a one. Right? There's nothing to do then in this because everything is already a one. All right, tomorrow you will have a quiz. It'll have some solubility. And there might be some identifying the types of reactions. So, stay I don't think I'm going to do any balancing or writing just yet. I'd like to have a day of practice okay, before we do that.